Yo boys, what's going on? Welcome back. It is the season finale of Jocks to Glory. Who cares about this? Uh, is it is episode number 51. Imagine that. Your manager saying, I don't care about your wage demands. Fuck off. And um, we're returning today with the Europa League final that's by. Now, of course, we do have Fulham away in the final game in the Premier League season. But after the dramatic win in the last episode, which was just... I extraordinary shades of Aguero in the Newcastle win 3 2 with a final goal in uh, in stoppage time. Talk about foreshadowing. I talked about that title in the start of the episode, didn't I? Um, we have got Fulham away, but I'm, I'm literally just going to sim it with a, a weakened side. So I'll get through to it, but I'll just pick a weakened side, sim it, and get through to the buying game. So obviously, you know, I don't normally sim games. In fact, I never sim games. This is the first sim. I think this is actually the first sim I've done in FIFA. 23 um certainly in this save at least but you know this game means nothing now and um obviously i'm i'm super excited for the uh for the Europa league final so might as well just crack straight on with that right because this is a, is a meaningless game you know some people ask me like why why do you play every game and why do you never simulate again i think this is the first thing i've done in the whole of Europa 23 and i say all the time it's because well it's it's just it's just well a it's more realistic but also because like like I don't know how to explain this, but there's, there's normally always something that matters. Do you know what I mean? Like, whether you're going for statistics or, or records. Um, you know me, I'm a big, big sucker for, like, stats and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then, then there's, like, reasons to keep players, you know, for the following season. It's the final couple of games of the year you've got nothing to play for. You know, the higher league finish, even if it's only mid-table, can matter for prize money and stuff like that. And again, mainly because the uh, the realism factor as well. But uh, do you know what? I'm actually going to go straight to the... Um, how do I just skip to the end? Is there a way? I don't think there's a way, actually. Like, normally, a manager's not going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to skip this game, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's not it's not going to happen. Like, unless it's a very uh, rare exception, you know? Um, I'm trying to think of one here. I suppose Liverpool, when they were playing in the Club World Cup, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a few years ago. Do you remember when he had Aston Villa the, the day before in the EFL Cup? So they just put their youth team out there. I'm pretty sure... It wasn't Klopp in charge. I'm pretty sure it was the uh, the youth team coach or the assistant manager. I can't remember now. Uh, I do remember one occasion where Ferguson missed a game at Manchester United uh, because it, I think it was like an EFL Cup game against the lower league side. And I think he was away scouting David De Gea. Long time ago now. But um, I, I do remember him missing a game. Like, put it this way. It's, it's incredibly, incredibly rare. You know, I think a manager can probably count the amount of times they've missed a competitive game, if not due to illness or suspension on one or two hands you know it's incredibly rare and that's why you know i, I always say this like you know you you buy the game you play the game however you want i don't like people that try and gatekeep you know uh not just career mode but but not not just fifa in any football game you know i don't like that kind of like gatekeeping and it, a game's got to be played a certain way absolutely not you bought the game with your hard-earned money you play the game however you want you know um, but if you are, you know, focusing on realism and, and for someone like myself, who just is a bit of a stats nerd, um, I didn't need to use the word stats there, I am just a nerd, <laughs> then, uh, then yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's, uh, it's just something I prefer to do is just play practically every game, you know? I do quite like this new sim though. Um, this came back in, in FIFA 21. And for those that haven't done this before, um, you can watch the game in a 2D version, which uh, if you if you watch my football manager saves, you'll uh, you'll be getting reminiscent watching this. But you can also jump in. So for example, I just press the square button here, and I go straight into the game. This reminds me of Total Club Manager. Now I really am showing my age here, because I'm sure some of you weren't even born when I was playing that game. But yeah, you can jump in and actually play the game at a certain point. And when you're ready, and when you when you raise the sim again, you can press the pause button, and you can jump back to the sim. And there's no limit to the amount of times you can do that. And the play restarts from where you were. So again, I jump the sim here, jump in. And again, you see the ball in the 2D. It's the exact same spot where the player is in the exact same place as you would have seen in the 2D. It's, it's really, really cool. And it's one of the features that I think EA added in, again, two years ago. And I give them a lot of credit for it. They get a lot of criticism, and rightfully so. But this is a really cool little feature. Anyway, it is going to be a loss in our final day. But with the weekend side out there, I am totally fine. 
with that because we've got far bigger fish to fry. So we'll uh, we'll quickly do the final Premier League standings then before jumping into that Europa League final. Obviously, again, we'd, we'd already won the title and we'd already lifted it as well. So there was no need to play that game at all. And you'll see that Liverpool in the end finished runners up in second with Man City and third and Chelsea in fourth. The, the top three, man, unbelievably tight. But it was a four horse race for a long time, of course, don't forget. So no surprise, the top four remained the same. Uh, Leicester finished in the Europa League spot with Everton and Manchester United in sixth and seventh. Spurs missed out in eighth place this year. As we know, Arsenal had an, an abysmal season, but they did end up surviving by six points. It would have been incredible had they got relegated in the end. They pulled it out to survive by six points. And uh, Fulham, who won on the final day against us, also went down alongside the Blades and the Bees, Sheffield United and Brentford. As for the individual stats, uh, Postman Pat did, of course, win the Golden Boot with 35 in 36. I, I definitely bottled getting him to 40 this year, but the trade-off was that we won the league title, and that is a trade-off I take every day of the week. Uh, Darius got in the top-scoring chart, so which is nice to see after a tough start. Wisdom won the assist title for the second year in a row with 17 in 36, averaging just under one in every two. And, of course, Theo, Theo won the Golden Glove with 18 in 32. What a ratio that is, especially considering we started the season off shockingly I'm going to be honest, he was the difference maker. He was the difference maker this season. What an incredible, incredible first year he's had in professional football. Right, let's crack on then. Let's do it. Uh, first only game today, Europa League final. It is Bayern Munich to go for a league in European double. If we don't win it, I won't be too disappointed because we finally won our first major honour at the basketball pitch. But I'd love it in our first European season after humiliation, getting knocked out of the group. If we could save ourselves, amend ourselves, avenge our demons and win the Europa League final. Bayern in the final, I'd say we're slight underdogs for this one, but it could go either way. Come on, Docs FC. Playing at Leon Stadium for this game. Really, really nice stadium. Obviously the, uh, the upgrade, if you will, from uh, Stade Jolin, I think is how you pronounce it. Probably not. But um, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely new build stadium. I must say, Leon, Leon are a great team if you want to do a uh, sort of an RTG for both domestic and European football. It's been a, a very long time since they uh, were last French champions. And now with PSG's dominance, great team to face, both, again, domestically and in Europe as well. Sanders, really brought out to, uh, to Reggie. Oh, yes, Reggie! Now he's going to come through the gap. Ah, oh, didn't get that right. Bloody love Lancaster. He's, he's so physical. There's only one member of our team missing for this game, and that is, oh, Yotakimura. That's it. Otherwise, a fully strength lineup for this one. But Sanders does well to beat it away. He, re he really has been the difference maker this season. It's incredible. Like, Mexican Mendez would always love him, but Theo has just been unreal since coming out of the academy. Lancaster. Wisdom now space down the right there. But SDP now does well to catch up. Good chance blown. Tough first half that. Very few chances. Good save by Theo. Otherwise not too much going on. I knew it was going to be a tight game but uh, there's been very little action. Let's see if we can get a good chance here. Lancaster. Great ball to Wisdom. Beats Jeremy Frimpong. And there's Lancaster shot blocks. But a rebound saved by Henderson. Denies Urich. Claims his own rebound. Great goalkeeping by the Englishman. Wisdom. Darius. Wisdom. Brilliant. And cleared. But we'll keep the chance alive with Ledesma. Back to Ibrahim. And the Prince has a dig for range. And Henderson beats it away with that left glove. To put it behind for a corner. Much better start to the second than we had in the first. Early chances. Testing Henderson. So far though. Standing up to the ball. Darius. Ali. What a brilliant ball to Lancaster. And Henderson again with the save. Three big saves in 19 minutes by the X-Red Devil. But he... Oh! I was going to say, he ain't going to stop Pat from the header. Because we know how good he is. He just... Oh, couldn't keep it down. What a fantastic 20 minutes. Well, I know a decent first half, but it's been all Dr. C in the second. However, their first chance results in a goal. 
It's a great little through ball. Smacked in at the near post. And there's no chance for the kid. Got him. We had a great start to the second half. But this is the AI in ultimate. They only need one chance. And they'll take it. The Saturn is this man! Instant response! The postman delivers a leveler! Brilliant ball by Wisdom. Feeding the postman through. And it's Robin to Batman as Docs FC are back on level terms. Now then. The Doc skill move with wisdom. And it would have been fitting had he converted. Henderson's been on one in this second half. If not for him, we'd be in front. Yo, yeah, no, I can't believe it. How has that stayed out? Oh, no, no, no. Theo, what a save. Oh, no, 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 no. And again, Sanders. Battle of the goalkeepers. The present and the future. Henderson and Sanders. Both on one tonight. And that's why it's going to extra time. Brilliant late saves by both of them. Game sprung into life in the second. And I think every single fan has got their money's worth. But they're now getting more bang for their buck. They're playing an extra 30 minutes. That was class. Made a change heading into extra time. It'll probably be the only one I make tonight. I bought on Lopez for the Des, which is a bold move to be fair. We're going to sacrifice our anchor man and a better defender for someone that's much more better on the offensive end. Because with the way the game is right now, it's so open. We might as well have another extra attacking body on there. Because, I mean, Bayern are going to get chances regardless whoever our two-man CM duo is. So we might as well throw in someone that's a bit better on the offensive end. Just go for it, you know. And here he is. Feeding through Reggie. Lancaster! Puts it wide! How have there only been two goals tonight? It should be 6-5 or something stupid. We have had so many penalty shoots out heartaches in this save. I don't fancy our chance if it goes to spot kicks, but at the moment it's looking likely. Wisdom, can you win that? Oh! Yuri, it's with one of the goals of the save! Might well have just won us the Europa League. Limbs in France. Theo buzzing. Fans ecstatic. Yuri, clutch. What a piece of skill by the Modric regen. And Henderson, who's been superb all night, has no chance. One of the goals of the save and a goal worthy of winning a trophy. He might well have pulled it off. Juric, the boy. What an incredible piece of technique. Oh, no, surely not. No! Oh, I don't believe it! Pass out from the back, cut out, and Kingsley Coman scores in France again. Unbelievable. Well, that is it. It is pens. Oh, I can't believe it. I thought we'd won it, courtesy of that man. Sensational piece of skill. But I gave it away passing out from the battle of Branco and it's spot kicks. Put your money on by him. We haven't won since we were in League One. <laughs> I can't see us winning this. So Darius is going to take our first. He's turned it round this season after a slow start. Can he set the tone? Yes, he can. Theo's first ever penalty shootout. Can't save the first shot on his goal. Now, normally I stay the same way when I score that way, so I will this time as well. Postman Pat, who scored our first in normal time, is denied. As is Kingsley. As is Reggie. Nope. Sends Henderson the wrong way. 
Malik Tillman. Denied! Juric. Also denied. Martinelli. Oh, Curtis King, who I bought off the bench specifically for the spot kicks. Scores, which means that Bayern must score with Bernardo Silva. If Theo makes the save, we have won the Europa League. Oh, it's as cool as you like from the ex-City boy. Wisdom. Keeps Bayern under pressure. Big Chris. The former Brentford centre-half. As he saved! Theo Sanders! The kid! The difference maker! Who's won us the Europa League? Incredible! It's a shocking penalty! But he had to guess right. And Theo, the teenager, has won Docs FC their first ever European honour. What a game! One of the best finals I've played in so many FIFAs. Incredible! Without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest fires I've played in recent FIFAs. That was extraordinary. Drama throughout. Topsy turvy, Bayern took the lead, we leveled, we took the lead in extra time, they leveled. And even, even on the spot kicks, it was topsy turvy. In a really even game that could have gone either way, it came down to who held their nerve and which goalkeeper was the hero on the spot kicks after they both had great games in normal and extra time as well. In the end, Theo best Steen as we win it on the penalty shootout. We hadn't won a shootout since, again, League One in the EFL Cup. A little bit more at stake this time, but, well, Theo stood up to the pressure and then some and delivered. So no doubt about it, he's my man of the match, man, honestly. I mean, there were some great individual performances out there, don't get me wrong, from both teams. But really, both goalkeepers were sublime, but it was Theo's heroics. So both, not just at the end of the normal time period, of course, don't forget, when he made that big double save, but also on the spot kicks as well. He tonight was incredible. He's been the difference maker. And, oh, I'm buzzing. At, what a great way to close out the season. Our first ever European honour. Buzzing. I really feel as though, like, that was just as, as dramatic as it gets, you know? I mean, and I've said this before, even if I'd have lost that game, you know, obviously I'd have been disappointed, don't get me wrong, but, like, honestly, I, I much prefer to play games like that, where even if you lose, you know, they're cracking. It's so much better than, like, a, a, an easy 4-0 victory or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So much better. That's the Europa League, yeah. Isn't it? Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, okay. But anyway, um, how do I not know my... Isn't that the same trophy? Oh, no, it is. Oh, no, it's because it's got the, uh, the the net. Not the net, but the kind of like the... Um... Oh, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, the, the bottom of the base of the trophy is, uh, is sort of... Holy. Holy? I... Whatever. Anyway, oh, God. I've lost it. I've absolutely lost it. But you know what I haven't lost? The Europa League. Buzzing, absolutely buzzing, and poor old Kimura, he missed both of our uh, our trophies, but he'll uh, he'll get medals for both, no doubt about it. So uh, we'll end we'll end the uh, the season uh, with uh, one final look at all the honours. Uh, Europa Conference League, you would have just seen that there was almost Celta Vigo beating Feyenoord on pens. Wow, Bournemouth almost went all the way. Of course, don't forget um, they're in a championship this year. Bournemouth, they almost went all the way to win it. 
How incredible would that have been had they won a European trophy despite being in the uh, in the championship? That would have been amazing. Um, Europa League, you would have seen just there as well. It was Lox FC winning. But obviously, you would have seen it beating Bayern in the final penalties. And the Champions League this year was won by Juventus. No surprise, you're watching one of my players save right now, beaten by Leverkusen in the final. Obviously, we were knocked out in the end. Uh, Leipzig uh, made it through alongside Milan with us. We were knocked out on head-to-head -head ruling. And, uh, well, that was a... That was a, yeah, that was a, a frustratingly poor one. But even so, as you would have seen there, uh, Leverkusen knocked them out. And Leipzig also got knocked out in the last 16 as well. So, yeah, unlucky boys. But, uh, yeah, Juve won it. And uh, as for the other domestic cups, uh, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup this year. Uh, we, of course, in the FA Cup, unfortunately, uh, were knocked out, let's just say, quite early uh, in this competition this year. When I get to round three, here we are. There you go. Took a while, um, and um, and of course the uh, the Premier League was ours. Oh, what a season! So we'll end the uh, episode and the season with a look at the stats of the players. Where we begin with the hero of the season, Theo, eighteen years old. We had him in our academy, and you know the the question was when do we promote this guy? And and you guys definitely got it spot on. You know we we brought him in to replace Mendes after a tough start to the Mexican, and this guy took to the team like a fish taken to water. Absolutely phenomenal. He grew five ranks this year, and his growth continues to be exceptionally quick. I keep on changing the development plans, but I'm going to change the balance for this one here uh, just to make sure the positioning goes up as well as the uh, diving and reflexes too because they're the lowest stats right now. But Theo, unbelievable season and two assists including for the Premier League winner through Darius on the final day. I mean, there are no words. This kid could become my greatest goalkeeper ever. Even more so than Cesar Valente at this point. And Mendes, I feel for the guy. I don't get me wrong, I feel for the guy. But, yeah, I hope he'll be okay accepting a bench role for Theo. But maybe next year we'll move on. I was coming in in episode one. Not a se no, one clean sheet all season long. But, oh, Mendes, we we'll always love you, bro. But uh, everyone knows it's Theo's time now. Um, Chidi's doing quite well on another loan spell. Uh, McLean, one of our most... Did he, did he set the most appearances this year? No, but close. Third most appearances this year for McLean. 50 all season long, up to, to 84 overall. Did quite well. we still got some really good youngsters coming through here, of course, uh, that have come back from loan. We'll try and loan out next year. Going to keep Genki, even though he barely plays for us now. Well, he does play mainly uh, off the bench. Branko up 3 to 86 overall this season. We love to see it. Kovacavich to command. Don't know how much better he can get this and I've got to say, for next season, I am thinking maybe, like Mendes, he'll be dropping to the bench. I guess we'll have to wait and see. JJ, up a rating to 82 overall. Not sure how much better he can get with him. So, Ledesma did well this year. Grew three, uh, three ratings to uh, the Busquets region. Filling in for Yuta Kimura, who unfortunately was injury-plagued again. Another season of tough injuries for Yuta. Playing only 24 of our 38 league games and 32 in all competitions. Oh, Yuta. Oh, Yuta Kimura. We still love him, but just can't keep himself fit at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, moving forward, Wright's going to lead to Mallorca come the end of the season. Jolton, the Milner region, also might go as well. Alfonso Lopez now accepting a bench roll with Juric coming in, but he's taken to the bench roll very well indeed. Juric, unbelievable sign in the Modric region. He had a tough start. But he scored so far my only free kick goal in the save. And he's one rating away from becoming the first 90 rated player in the team as well. Which I think he will too. He really picked it up after a tough start at Euros this year. Wisdom, 13 goals, 25 assists in 50 games. Most of those goals assists in the Premier League. Up to 88 overall. We love the Nigerian Prince. I'm keeping you and Naylor until he retires. He might not play that much. But he still does alright in the games where he plays. You know? So we love to see it. Uh, the name of region has been put on the transfer list. I'm going to let him go. I barely used him this year. When I did when I did use him, I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of the Neymar region this year. I'm going to be totally honest here. Darius, of course, transitions take time. Did really well in the second half of the season. He scored the Premier League winning goal, of course, with that Aguero-esque moment against Newcastle United. Tough start, but he turned it around. Transitions take time. Uh, Reggie, 13 goals, 11 assists in 50 league games this year. Once again, really, really good on that right-hand side for us. 
Um, and then moving forward into our strikes, of course, we'll end with the postman. Up three to 86 overall, 35 goals in 36 games, 8 in 8 in the Europa League as well, and 48 in 51 in all competitions. One of his most consistent seasons across the board for the postman. I don't know how much better he can get than 86 overall, but he'll always be our captain and always lead our line. This dude is the real deal. So, that will do it for today's episode and a dramatic season finale. And guys, I want to say a massive thank you for watching the season finale. What a thrilling end to what an incredible season, both in the Premier League and in that Europa League final as well. And we move on to next season. I've I got to say, I'm not really sure to improve this team, but I'm definitely thinking maybe a new fullback, maybe a new centre-half. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys. Much love to you all. Appreciate the love on the season finale and the whole season as well. And I'll see you for the next episode with Docs FC defending a league and European double as we're back in the Champions League as Premier League holders as well very soon. What a finale.